Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome to another Movement Parallels Life video where we're looking at creative and innovative movement training to better your fitness and better your life. Now I'm really excited for this video in particular because we're going over combo training. With these combos, we're gonna be taking several movement techniques and skills and weaving them together into a larger sequence of movement. We want you to get out of this mindset of just isolated exercises and start looking at larger sequence of movements. And that's really gonna be our goal with these combos. Now, just as a heads up, this is gonna be higher intensity, higher complexity. Now, I don't say that to scare you off, but this is gonna be different than the previous classes. Where we're gonna begin is with a technique breakdown. We're gonna look at some new crawling movements and we're gonna look at some new climbing movements. Your job is to review the technique breakdown and figure out what are gonna be the right progressions for you. Then we're gonna look at three different combos. I'll show you how I'm gonna use this gym space to set up these larger sequences of movement, taking these techniques and weaving them together. This isn't necessarily a follow along class, but you can take some notes and you can start to translate how I set up my combos and look at the areas that you're training in and figure out how you can piece some of this stuff together on your own. As always, you can try to follow along with me. You can make any modifications necessary as long as you've got something to hang on and uh, some space to jump and to crawl, you'll be good to go through these combos. It can be done in the gym, outside, or in the comfort of your own home. I encourage you to take things at your own speed and let progress come organically. These movements are gonna be new, they're gonna take some time, you're gonna to have to take a progressive approach and be consistent in your practice, but if you do that, I guarantee you'll see gains, you'll see improvement. So that's just to give you a little bit of background, but let's get into the technique breakdowns and let's start moving. Let's start with our technique breakdown, taking a quick look at two crawling patterns. The first pattern I like to call the lateral shuffle crawl. You can call it the monkey crawl or whatever works for you, but you're going to start in a low position, reach your hands across your body, plant the hands on the ground, and then you're gonna shift your weight, push into the ground as you jump your legs across your body. And this gives you that lateral traveling locomotive pattern. This is a pretty easy technique to get the hang of, and once you feel confident in it, you can start adding some complexity, some additional flair to it. These knee-hand hip rolls and little spiraling rotation turns are good add-ons to this movement as you start to change your orientation, play around with the tempo, uh, direction changes, anything that you want to use to start to play with making this movement uh, a little bit more adaptive. Second crawling technique is the forward roll into the foot hand crawl. Here you're working to roll from the back of your shoulder to your opposite hip. So you're going to place your hands out in front of you, reaching for the ground, surrounding your spine so you can place the back of your shoulder on the floor. And then keeping that rounded position is going to allow you to roll through very fluidly. And if you keep your legs positioned right in that figure four position, you'll find a very stable exit into your half kneeling position when you finish. If you have a little momentum with this technique, it's really going to make the roll a lot easier, but it depends on your comfort level. It can be a little intimidating to go hips overhead, so if you're just new to this, start slowly and find some soft ground to practice on. Here I'm starting out in a pretty low position and then gradually starting to fall forward, reach out for the ground and execute the roll. As you finish the roll, transitioning into the crawl is very easy from that half kneeling base. Separate the roll and the crawl and gradually start to blend those two movements until they're seamless. Next, we're going to break down three climbing techniques. So the first movement we're looking at is the side swing. 
So right off the bat, we'll just give you a demonstration of what this looks like. You're looking for this smooth side-to-side -side movement, making sure that the body doesn't start to uh, rotate or uh, swing in circles, but you're just trying to stay in that frontal plane. The movement is initiated by the hips and the side body pulling you off center, and then you relax that tension. This will enable you to fall right through the midline and give you some momentum to perpetuate the swing. The action doesn't come through pulling through the arms, but as you swing, you're going to feel a stretch on one side of the body. When you get to the end of that stretch, the musculature is just naturally going to contract and pull you back through in the other direction. So this is a very light and efficient movement. When you start to get the rhythm behind it, you can sense when you can replace your hands and start to move or traverse side to side. The next technique we're breaking down is the pop-up. Now this is a pretty technical movement and requires a lot of strength and explosiveness. So we'll review a handful of progressions and you're going to figure out what's going to be the best starting point for you. The first challenge here is setting up the position. So putting the forearms on top of the bar and just practicing hanging from that forearm position. You can pick your feet all the way up off the ground or keep some weight on the ground. Depends on how stable you feel. From there, you're going to play around with creating just a little bit of a pull from that forearm hang position. You maintain scapular stability by keeping the shoulder blades depressed while you pull. From this stable hang, you're going to perform an explosive knee tuck. That's going to give you a little bit of upward lift that's going to be very helpful when it comes to completing the full pop-up. Next progression is the jumping pop-up. This is going to be all about dialing in the right timing for the full pop-up. So you place your forearms, you jump, and as you elevate over the bar, the forearms are going to splay open, and this creates some room for your upper body to lean over the top of the bar. At the finish, the top of my abdominals are resting on top of the bar. From there, I can close the hands back to the bar and just start to lean back and then slowly come back working that eccentric mo movement is also going to help develop strength for the full pop-up. Now we're going to go into the full hang and start working our entry into the forearm hang position. So here I'm going to use a side swing until I've got enough momentum to climb one arm up and over, place the forearm, and then climb the other arm over. We're trying to make this as efficient as possible for the sake of conserving energy. Next technique, just more of a pull-up. Instead of creating that swing, I'm going to create a strong pull, climb one arm up and over, and then the other. A more advanced transition here going from a hand hang to a forearm hang in one motion using an explosive pull-up and repositioning the forearms on top of the bar, getting ready for the pop-up. From here, you can also play around with some of those drills, the forearm pull and the high knee tuck. By spending more time with these conditioning drills, you'll build the strength necessary for the full pop-up. When you put all the pieces together, you've got the full tuck pop-up is demonstrated here. Now, just understand that it can be a long road to get to this level, it requires a lot of strength, and there's a lot of technicality behind this movement as well. So be patient, work your progressions, and put in the work, and you'll get there in due time. Last skill breakdown we're going to do today is the swing up. So first step is getting in position with the leg hooked over the bar. Easy way to start that is with the side swing we learned earlier. When you hook the leg over the bar, you want to make sure that you 
get the bar right behind the knee. It's a little uncomfortable at first, but you'll get used to it. And it's really important to have that security clamping down that bar behind the knee as opposed to just resting your calf on the bar. You can also go to a foot pinch and then climb one leg over for the hook. Just spending time getting comfortable in this position, which is somewhat uncomfortable, is a big step forward in completing this technique. From the start position, you're going to take your free leg and lift it up to the bar. Try to think about bringing my thigh to the bar and then pulling the leg straight down. The weight of the leg swinging downward feeds right into my pull upward just peeking over the top of the bar here, getting a sense of how to time this, swinging the leg down and pulling up and over. After you get the basics of the position and the timing, you can start to add more speed and strength to the movement. So I lift the leg up, powerfully swing it down. And then as that leg is coming down, I'm going to start to pull through my arms and come up and over the bar. I would say the two keys to this movement are patience and position, making sure that you have the patience to allow the leg to swing down and then initiate your pull. A lot of times people will start to try to pull up and over too early. And then the second key is finding the right position, making sure that you keep the integrity of the swing leg and make sure it stays in one piece. You don't want to bend at the knee, but rather pull down from the hip. And from here, you're going to be able to utilize the leverage of your straight leg to pull you up and over the bar easily. Now that we've broken down some of these techniques, let's get into our first combo. So we got four rounds on this first combo, three movements. We're going to start with the side swing for 10 cycles or 20 hand exchanges. Once you get that rhythm going, this is just all about your grip strength and maintaining shoulder stability. Keep that rhythm, keep that nice swing controlled, keep it going side to side, staying in the frontal plane. I'm going to drop down, going into a vertical jump, depth jump combo. Vertical jump on top of the box, and then a depth jump onto the target. I'm going to take note when I go into that depth jump, I'm already lowering my center of gravity and just pushing away from the box, but mostly letting gravity do the work for me. Just trying to land precisely and softly as possible. We get about four vertical jumps, four depth jumps. And we're transitioning into that lateral shuffle crawl for 10 strides. You can just take that side to side. You get a sense of how all these movements start to flow together. And with each successive round, you can start to polish your technique and polish your transitions, smooth things out a little bit more, and keep bringing the intensity.
right, let's head into combo two where we're looking at a lift, a swing up, and a forward roll to a crawl for three rounds. Let me break down this first round for you. I chose to go with a kettlebell snatch for five reps each side. You can choose any lift that you're familiar with that you can bring a little intensity to the combo. It could be a deadlift, a squat, a press, a clean, whatever you want. Make sure you choose a weight that's properly challenging for you, where you can keep your form dialed in tight, but it's still going to make you work. And here we make a quick transition onto the bar right into our swing up. We're looking at three repetitions each side, but if you don't have the full technique yet, you're going to go back to the breakdown and look for the right progression for you. The right progression is the one that you can do with the best possible form, but it's still challenging for you. You're still getting some work out of it. Be mindful as you come down from the bar and make a transition into your forward roll to foot hand crawl. In this case, I went from my roll into my crawl for a few steps and then went with a backwards crawl. You can make any modifications to this that are going to work for your space. If you're new to the forward roll, make sure that you've got some mats, some blankets, or some soft ground to practice this roll on. The biggest considerations are a soft entry into the roll and when you exit the roll coming out in that stable base, that half kneeling position. That's going to bring us to the end of this first round. You've got two rounds left to continue to polish the movements and the transitions. Go get it.
Good work, you guys. I hope you save room for dessert because we got a finisher coming up next. Pop-ups, sprawls, and V-ups. Three rounds. Start things with your tuck pop-ups. Seven reps. Remember, if you don't have the whole technique yet, go back to the breakdown and find the progression that's going to be right for you. Forearm pulls or jumping pop-ups are a great place to start. Mindful transition off the bar and right into seven back sprawls. Now this isn't a lazy burpee. This is a dynamic movement. You're active on the balls of the feet. You're lowering your chest all the way to the ground and popping back up to your feet. Active the whole time. Flip over, seven V-ups. These are an absolute core killer. They require a lot of tension and the right timing to dynamically lift the upper body and the lower body and reach for those toes. This might take some time to figure out, but you got this. All right, two rounds to go. Finish this workout strong. Of course, once we're done bringing the intensity, we're on to recovery. So I'm going to leave you today with some clips of the ground-based movement sequence that didn't make it into this video, but I did turn it into a separate video, a 15-minute ground-based movement practice that you can check out on your own. Really, after we elevate the heart rate, elevate the physiology with some of these intense movements, it's just a good strategy to focus back on the breathing, calming down the nervous system through deliberate breathing and light movements. So you have a little sample of that here. It's not about finding the perfect combination of stretches. What it is about is checking in with the body. You just did something high intensity, performance oriented, and now it's time to get back on your restoration work. Listen to what the body has to say 
and use your breathing and your movements as a tool to facilitate the recovery process. So that's all I've got for you today. It was awesome to be able to share with you some of these higher level techniques and the progressions that'll get you there. So just remember, stay patient, find the right progressions for you, put the work in and good things will happen in time. All these techniques, all this practice, it's all for you. It's all for the sake of you getting out into the real world and moving and enjoying movement and feeling confident to move however you want, wherever you want. There are no arbitrary standards that you have to meet. This is all for the sake of building a practice that you love. So once again, you guys, thank you for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.